Real quick, I wanted to just tell y'all for, 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 for our, our, our guest and, and, and Mike and Cindy, y'all might not remember this, but uh, Brother Charles is our pastor emeritus, uh, a very great man of God. Uh, this is also his book here that I'm holding here too, that y'all can also actually check out uh, in our library. It's supposed to be in our library, but I've been reading it, so I, I brought it back. So uh, he's a very great man of God. He's just a wonderful man and uh, some very big shoes for me to feel. Uh, uh, which I'm honored to feel his shoes, but uh, be in prayer for Brother Charles. Uh, he's uh, he's turning what 90 90 this year. I think he's turning 90. He'll be, he'll, yeah, he'll be 90 this year. So uh, next Sunday, y'all is going to be a very special Sunday. We're going to be doing two baptisms here at Bethel. Uh, it's been a while since we've done some baptisms here, uh, so we're going to be doing two baptisms here, which I'm excited about too. Also, uh, we're going to have a guest pastor here. My friend Sam Reynolds is going to be driving up here from. Uh, from the valley to be preaching and uh, I think mom said she's gonna play a song if that's okay with y'all I'll be up here too so the family duo will be up here with the guitars and the, all the fun so we're gonna have a, a nice old shindig for God here next Sunday uh, like we have every Sunday by the way so uh, let's get to it all right so the Word of God states in Isaiah the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and to release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim from the year of the Lord, uh, Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow him a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Um, lost my spot there. The oil of joy instead of mourning and garment of praise instead of spirit a spirit of despair they will be called oaks of righteousness y'all remember that those words oaks of righteousness those are good words a planting of the lord for the display of his splendor they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated they will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations the word of god and one more John. Can't go wrong with John. And I love the book of John. One verse in John. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Let us pray. Father God, you've guided me in preparation. Lord, I ask that you guide me in presentation. Father God, may everything I do bring glory and honor to you. May I hold back myself, but not hold back the Spirit. I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to declare your truths. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are actually starting a sermon series today. Obviously, the sermon series won't go on to next Sunday because my friend's coming. But we are going to start a sermon series all the way till July. Uh, so I hope you guys like history like me. And I promise you I'm not going to drown you or bore you in history. I'll try not to. But uh, I like to talk about history uh, while I'm preaching the Word of God. So in March of 1775... The Second Virginia Convention met at St. John's Episcopal Church in Richmond, Virginia. They were there to discuss the strategy against the British. It was here that Patrick Henry, he made his most famous speech. And some of y'all remember those words, they still echo today. Give me liberty or give me death. He spoke with great passion. He had a lot of passion because his wife, Sarah Henry, she was in chains. Now, she wasn't a slave. There was a lot of slaves in chains, by the way, uh, back then. But she was a slave to her own mental passions, her own mental, uh, her mental, her mental problems. She was in chains, and she was actually in a straitjacket. This started in 1771, after their sixth child, by the way, that Sarah started having extreme mental problems. And she actually shortly died after this speech. So Henry, Patrick Henry, you could say he understood what it meant to be in chains. He stood before the founding fathers and he spoke these words of our great country. And I want to share his words with y'all today. His words say that where gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand here idle? 
Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains or slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but for me, give me liberty or give me death. This ardent speech made by Patrick Henry, it literally stirred the souls of men to fight for liberty back then. You know, we should still hold Patrick Henry as one of America's great heroes. Even if our culture tries to demonize him or even try to cancel us for promoting him as a hero. Since our foundations, Americans, we have responded to the call to fight for freedom. We have sent troops all over the world to fight for injustice, to liberate others, to help others who are not living free lives. And sadly, we can look at our young adults today and even our older adults today, and we can see that our fighting patriotic spirit is fading. But you know, church, I'm not here to talk really about our patriotic spirit. This is church. I'm here to talk about our Christianity. It's worse when it comes to our Christian liberties. We don't even fight. Some folks give up without a fight. And it is a fight. Let's not, let, let's, let's not kid ourselves. The day that you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you were in a fight. Why? Because the devil... He wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. He wants to decimate you. This is no joke, y'all. Many today, they're crying out for freedom. We all, we've all heard the voices. They cry out to freedom. It's my right. It's my body. Or there's cries. Every, every, everything's racist. That's what happens today. Everything's racist. And I, I, can't, I can't look up a piece of history without it being racist. And if I, if I told y'all some of the funny things that I find on, on, on history research, um, y'all would be here a lot longer. But... Um, I was doing some research, and, uh, you know, I, I found that you'd be surprised who fought for the Confederacy, <laughs> how many colors, how many Indians fought for the Confederacy. Now, I'm not up here promoting the Confederacy. What I'm saying is that this flag right here, these flags right here, they're all made by the world, and the world has sin in it. And you, if you're going to look for sin, you're going to find a few smudges there. But people are crying that everything's offensive. Or change, my, or change my, my man to a girl, right? My boy needs to be a girl. Come on now. Those are the cries. Those are the cries that people are crying. And if you go back to 1775, <laughs> it's a far cry from give me liberty or give me death. Very far cry, my friends. It's more like give me what I want, let me live in sin, Passionately, passionately, though, they are, I'll give them this, people are passionately pursuing the freedom of speech, the freedom of pleasure, the freedom to do whatever they like, and the freedom to silence anyone who disagrees with their fragile little minds. Yet they don't find freedom. This is what I'm getting at, church. I want y'all to understand this. I'm not up here making a political statement. Is that they don't find freedom. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's a very good question. We're going to talk about that for a second. First of all, they don't know true freedom. They don't know true freedom. And if they do know who true freedom is and they don't do know who he is, they don't care to accept him or listen to him. First and foremost, true freedom exists in the unseen. Think about that. True freedom exists in the unseen which is spiritually, and that is exclusively to Jesus Christ. And second, and this is just my opinion, true freedom exists because of one's service. Because of one's service, a life of servitude to God and country based upon patriotic and religious duties. And that's my opinion. Instead, people are fighting for false freedoms. You know how many false freedoms they're fighting for out there? They don't even realize it. And don't get me wrong. I, I've been out there. I, I've, been, I've, I've been in those false freedoms, right? But what they've done is they've made themselves slaves. We're making ourselves slaves and we're making ourselves prisoners. Let me give you an example. 
the freedom to get drunk, right? Oh, I, I, I'm 21. I, I can drink, or even before they're 21, they, they drink, right? I've been there. The freedom to get drunk only creates slavery, chains, chains of addiction, chains of alcoholism, chains of bankruptcy, chains of divorce. It only leads to sadness and despair. The freedom to get high, the freedom to shoot up, it leads to death, disease. The freedom to sleep with whoever and whoever I want, to sleep around, it only forges more bonds of disease, broken hearts. There are so many broken hearts out there, shattered families. Is that freedom? I think not. The freedom for foul speech. Oh my gosh, and that, my young self would have said, gosh, I never knew you were going to get this way, Brandon. But you know what? The Holy Spirit makes me this way, and it makes us this way. Is that I don't like cussing. I don't like foul language. Foul language is just, is just a thing that shackles the soul. It puts the mind in the gutter. And I don't want to, I don't want to throw this gym under the bus, but I go, I go to a gym, right? I love going to this gym. And they play dirty rap music all the time in this gym. And I'm going to eventually I'm going to talk to the gym owner because he is a Christian, but I don't know if he, he might or might not know. But I start thinking about this. Listening to all this negative music, it, it's got to make the mind ignorant. It's got to make it's got to cloud the cloud them with with you know. If it really makes them probably think that okay, I can treat a woman this way, or I'm supposed to be this way to men, and it's horrible music. The freedom that they think, it only imprisons the emotions. It only makes them feel guilty. A dungeon, I'm going to use the word dungeon of guilt and depression. This stuff is real. Depression is real, folks. The freedom to comfort of comfort, it only entangles the heart with laziness, indifference, and self-centeredness. The freedom that thousands and thousands upon thousands, my friends, that they seek, it doesn't bring freedom. It doesn't bring the liberty that they want or they need. Spirits of oppression. Now listen to this, church. Spirits of oppression bring depression. There are so many saints of God living in the spiritual shackles and chains. You know, I've been one. I've been one. I've been in the chains of depression. Depression's real. Anxiety's real. Mental illness is real. But I want to proclaim to you today... And lean in closely for this one. Living free, truly free, is just as real. You are bound by your past because you can't forgive yourself. Has anyone ever been that way? I just can't forgive myself. I know I have. I've, 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 I've had trouble forgiving myself for things I've done in the past. We can't forgive ourselves even though God forgave you. God forgave you. Remember that. Some live with change from their past addictions or their present addictions. But God forgave you. People can't break out of those chains. Some folks, they live with these generational curses. Oh my gosh, let's talk about generational curses for a second. That's ran in my family for generations, right? We've, all, we've had that, right? Maybe, um, maybe your daddy or your, your grandmother or your great-grandfather, they're preacher haters, right? We all have those preacher haters in the family. And maybe they had some bad preachers. There are some bad preachers out there, right? And they say, I, I don't want to go to church, right? Everybody at church, is, they're hypocrites, right? Oh, my gosh. If I, if I had a dollar for every time I've, I've heard that, when I invited someone to church, I don't want to go to church. They're a bunch of hypocrites, and I've been there. I've done that. Well, guess what? You're being, you're, 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 you're being cliche. You're falling into that same category. So you became a preacher hater, and now you're a Sunday morning protester. Just like your daddy, just like your grandmother, just like your great grandfather. Dad wouldn't submit to authority. Now, this is my this is one of my favorite ones. Dad wouldn't submit to authority, so I'm not going to listen to no man. No man's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to live. I'm going to be my own man. Daddy walked out of my life, and now no man, no spirit's going to tell me what to do, how to live my life. It's my attitude. And guess what? That attitude. The devil loves that attitude. Oh boy, does he love that attitude. Give me those macho men that think like that. Oh, I can have a field day with that, is what the devil says. He throws chains on them. 
with having that attitude. Now listen, watch this. Listen to this. Watch this, guys. You were not built to be prisoners. You were not built to be prisoners. We are not meant to be in shackles and chains like this from the demons of hell. You and I were built for two things, okay? I want to tell you what those two things are. We were built to worship God, and we were built to have a relationship with him. The devil, absolutely, he hates worshipers. Did y'all know that? He doesn't just, I dislike worshipers. No, he hates worshipers with an evil, evil, evil grin. He hates worshipers. Worship is something, you know why? Let me tell you why. I want to tell you why he hates us worshiping God so much. Back to the unseen, right? Back to the unseen realm. Because when we worship and we celebrate and we love God, guess what? We are breaking into the unseen realm. We are making waves <laughs> in the devil's little, little bitty world. And we are celebrating God and we are loving God. And he doesn't like that. He knows, if, he knows if he can get worshipers to start feeling sorry for themselves, which he always does. <laughs> They start making excuses why they can't go to church. They can't be faithful in prayer, right? He knows that if he can get worshipers sidetracked or sidelined, guess what? That revival that they wanted to have, that church get-together they wanted to have, that baptism they wanted to have, those fun times they wanted to have celebrating God's love and what he does in, our house, in his house, he knows he can make a wave in that, that air category. We need to let the prisoners hear us, church. It's so important that every time we come to church that we press through any garbage that we have going on in our minds. It's so important that we press through the spirits that have been attacking us because they are attacking us. Because when we begin to worship, it changes the entire atmosphere. Wow. I don't know about y'all, but that gives me a little, a little chill down my spine. But a good chill, not like an eerie chill, but a... A good, a good feel. You know, somebody stand up right now and say I wasn't built to be a prisoner. Someone, does anyone have the courage to stand up and say I wasn't built to be a prisoner? I wasn't built to be a prisoner. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> We're not built to be prisoners, church. Thank you, Sister Cindy. You know, look at California, right? California, oh my gosh. Well, maybe we don't need to look at California, but we're going to talk about California today. Last year, what, houses of worship, they were, they were told to discontinue and told to discontinue under, under Governor Newsom during the pandemic. They're told to discontinue. Californians were still free to attend the house of worship, but they weren't supposed to sing or chant. <laughs> Are you kidding me? They weren't supposed to sing. They'd come to church, but hey, Brother Robert, if you sing, you're going to go to jail. You're going to be in trouble. Come on now. They better not do that in Texas. Well, at least if they do that in Texas, at least I hope we have more backbone than that. So, and then German churches, they stopped singing. They stopped singing to, to prevent the spread of the COVID virus. Should Americans, should Texans, should we clam up? What do you think our founding fathers would do? You think our founding fathers would be okay with this? Would they have let it go this far? In fact, I'll be honest with you. You know what I think our founding fathers would have done if they were to look at some of these kids out there? They would have slapped those kids in the face. And they would punch the parents right between the eyes. And that's just the honest God's truth. So, are we so blind that we cannot see? Satan is trying to stop worshipers. He's trying to stop us from worshiping God. Go to church, but don't worship. Let me read Psalm 150. I want y'all to listen to Psalm 150, right? Psalm 150 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psalmetry and the harp. Praise him with the tremble and the dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the Lord's cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breathes praise the Lord. Praise thee, Lord. 
Do you think that was done with a whisper? Heck no, it was not done. We are worshipers of God. We are worshipers of Jesus Christ. You know, he said that he would give you beauty for ashes, the oil for, of joy for the morning, the garment of praise of the spirit of heaviness. You know, I, I've seen ashes before. We've all seen ashes before, right? There, there's, <laughs> there's nothing beautiful about ashes. <laughs> uh, you know, but think about what they once were one time. One, ashes were a part of a fire that was once hot. Right? But because the fire wasn't fed, it went out. We need to feed the fire. We need to keep the fire hot. We don't need to let anybody or anyone tell us to stop feeding the fire. Matter of fact, what we need is we need, we need preachers, we need believers to say, feed that fire more, make that fire louder, and praise as loud as you can that I love Jesus Christ and I accept Jesus Christ and I'm going to worship him to the day he calls me home so I can worship him up there. Amen. We need the fire. Matthew 3, 11. I like this one. It talks about baptizing. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with the fire. Ooh, Holy Ghost. Scary, right? Someone, my, my Pentecostal friends used to make fun of me. They said, well, y'all Baptists are afraid of the Holy Ghost. I don't, know where, I don't know where they get these memes from. These memes, they crack me up. No. <laughs> no, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. We are empowered. We are empowered with the Spirit. Are the people we're supposed to have the fire? He gave us the fire. This is not some dead or dry religion, y'all, where we gather in a cold building and listen to some cold songs and listen to a cold preacher. At least I hope not. We need that fire to burn. Hey, if you're cold this morning, I want you guys to get closer to the fire. I want you to get closer to the fire of the Lord. And this fire is not going to burn you. It won't hurt you. But this fire will burn those chains that you have on you. It will burn those chains of addiction off you. It will burn those chains of depression off you. It will burn those chains of fear off you. We have all kinds of chains, y'all. I want y'all to know that everybody's got all kinds of chains. You know, Daniel said, Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Amdigo fell down upon, uh, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste, and he spake and unto, said unto them, his counselors, Did not we cast three men into the midst of the fire? They answered and they said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, walking. In the midst of the fire. When people are mourning, church, they're mourning that something's dead. That's usually when we're mourning. We're mourning something's dead, right? Something that is gone. Someone that's gone. Someone that's not returning. Something that's not coming back. God said, I want to give you joy. He said, I want to give you joy. I know what it's like, church. I know what it's like to mourn and grieve. We all have different things for people we've mourned through. I mean, I, I, know, I think I know what it's like. I've lost a wife who was 35 when she, when she got called home. I lost a father. We've lost mothers. I haven't lost my mom yet, but I know some of y'all have lost, lost y'all's moms. Many of y'all have. I've lost a best friend. I've lost a dog I love. We've all lost, we've all lost people and things that we've loved. We've grieved over loved ones who have gone, dreams that have died, ambitions that never came to fruitation, and mourned because things didn't work out. We've all had these things, but get this, church. God said, I want to give you joy. I want to give you joy. Stop mourning and start having joy. That marriage that didn't work out, Stop mourning. That dream that became a nightmare, stop mourning. 
That church that fell through, stop mourning. That person that left you, stop mourning. They hurt your feelings, stop mourning. That dream job that didn't work out, stop mourning. You're busy mourning, you're busy missing. You're missing, that's why I'm saying you're missing the greatest opportunity of your life. The greatest setup in your life, that is God can turn your mourning into dancing joy. You walk into church, there's folks that walk into church like they got a black cloud over their head. And you go home and there's a black cloud, there's still the black cloud, there's still a black cloud on their head, they go home, right? And there's still a black cloud on their head. Y'all remember the cartoons, right, Sister Kay? Remember those cartoons that, oh, Scooby-Doo or someone would walk in, they always had like a, uh, what Scooby-Doo with Snoopy or someone? They, they all have, you know what I'm talking about, they have the black clouds over their head. So, you go to the job, they still got the black clouds on their head. Stop mourning. It's dead. Stop trying to breathe life into something that's dead. Get you some anointing oil. Get closer to the fire. Walk over to your spouse and anoint them with joy. Take back what the devil stole from you. Because that's what happened. The devil stole your joy. Why are you going to let him take your joy? Brother Robert, you going to let the devil take your joy? You weren't built to be a prisoner. You and I weren't built to be prisoners, my friends. Get on the garment of praise instead of carrying all that heaviness around. Cast it upon Jesus and take that joy that he wants to give you. So you know who's truly trying to, I'm going to go ahead and land the plane, as Pastor Brandon likes to say. I got that from Pastor Tim, by the way, my, my, my pe preacher that taught me. So as I land the plane, I want y'all to, uh, to think about this. Who do y'all think is truly trying to divide our nation? Who do y'all think is truly trying to divide our churches, right? It's not Joe. <laughs> Joe don't even know where he is half the time. I shouldn't say that. But, you know, it's not him. It's not Kamala. It's the devil. The devil is the one that's trying to divide our nation. Don't point. Don't put. Don't, don't just stop at one person. The devil is. He may be using your, this current administration or he may be using other worldly powers, but it's the devil. We need worshipers and prayer warriors to rise up and stop being fooled by Satan's tricks. I'll just stay home. I'm having a bad hair day, right? That's what they say. Or I'll stay home because my feelings got hurt. I won't go to church. I'm afraid to go to church because of this and that. But you weren't scared to go to Walmart without a mask. <laughs> you weren't scared to go to McDonald's without a mask. You weren't scared to sit down and eat a chili without a mask. <laughs> don't tell me. Don't, don't give me that. Come on now. So... We have to use wisdom and understanding and stop blaming stuff on the virus, stop blaming stuff on the situation, stop blaming stuff on the government, stop blaming stuff on China or Mexico. You're a prisoner. Break out. And I'm here this morning to say that only true freedom, it can only be found in one place. The freedom that Americans are passionately they desire is not found in the pursuit of personal pleasure. It's not sound. We talked about that a second. It's not found in the pursuit of personal pleasure. It's found. It's, it's not found in the search for social significance. It's only, 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 only found. And yes, Jesus Christ. It's only found in Jesus Christ. Jesus came, you know, because Jesus came, y'all. He came to give us real freedom. He came to give us real freedom. He came to bring freedom from the powerful bonds of sin. Sin is those activities and actions and those thoughts and desires, those words and the language that bring displeasure to God. It is a sin that God carries. It is a sin that God carries. Uh, that says, says carries a. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. It's a sin to carry, to carry these things that displease God. The Apostle Paul said, it is this way, for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The sin in our lives deserves the payment of death. Paul also tells us that everyone has a sin. Everyone has a sin except for one, Jesus. Jesus has not sinned. We're all imperfect people, but we have a perfect God. And God does not make mistakes. He did not make a mistake when he made you. He 
has a very special plan for you, my brothers and sisters. And Jesus came to set us free from death and from the bonds of sin. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for this um, opportunity to speak the word today, Lord. I just, I just love your word. I just love this, the liberty that, that we have to, to, to seek you, to, to preach you, Lord, to love you, Lord. Just, I thank you for this relationship that I have with Jesus Christ, Lord. And I just ask that anyone here that does not know Jesus Christ, that, that they, 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 they come up and know him now, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you grant us traveling mercy, Lord. We thank you for the rain, Lord. Be with everybody here uh, today in this sanctuary and on this feed. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I dare not end a sermon without offering a lifeline. So if y'all wonder where my little helper Gage is at, by the way, Gage is actually at uh, Haley's Church. Haley graduated, so they're celebrating uh, Haley's graduation. I forgot to mention that, so Haley's graduating over there. So, But I dare not end a lifeline without offering a er, lifeline. Reboot this. I dare not end a sermon without offering a lifeline. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, make a profession of faith today. You can make a profession of faith here in the sanctuary. If you're my folks on the feed, you can make a profession of faith right there on that feed. All you got to do is say, hey, I'm, I'm a sinner just like everybody else, but I want to be better. I want to know Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, and he will come into your heart, and he will change you. The Holy Spirit will move you, and you will not turn back. I promise you that. So accept Jesus Christ today as Lord and Savior. If you need special prayer, go ahead and type in your prayer requests. I'll get those in a second on the feed. But if you need prayer in this, this church, come on up. Let's pray over you. Let's pray with you. And lastly, if you want to join this church, if there's anybody in here that wants to join this church, you can come up during our invitational hymn, or you can come meet with me. Uh, if you want to be nonchalant, you can meet with me after the services or, or one of our, our, our leaders here. Thank you. Let's turn to page 675. Sing the first verse. and pray for our friends on the feed here real quick and let me stroll down here thank y'all so much for joining hello sister connie and brother tom and houston we're going to pray for y'all guys in houston too father god be with sister uh connie and tom as they're traveling lord just be with them too as well uh be with our, our, our brother brother uh, brother roy lindley too watching be with my mom too who uh, who's uh, having a little trouble with her uh, her back today we just pray for her lord i just pray for tammy roper uh she's having some arthritis lord i just pray for her her hands and knuckles to feel better so she can do her work and just take away the pain, Lord. She needs her hands for the work, Lord. So we just pray for Tammy Roper. We love you, Tammy Roper. We hope to see you soon, Lord. Uh, be with Shane, too, as well. I don't know if he's working today, but wherever he's doing, uh, just be with him. And be with Sister Jill and uh, and Brother Kevin up there and uh, in Austin area. So we just love you guys. Thank you all very much. God bless you and your sweet families. And Brother Robert, would you go be so kind to close us out in closing prayer, please? <laughs> 